Okay, real estate investor case study number five. So we're gonna look at a case here of a 60 year old individual that has some assets. He's got some cash that he wants to move into a policy. And the reason why is he's still investing in real estate. He's got some opportunities and he likes the idea of getting money into a cash value life insurance policy, one for the death benefit, He's interested in the legacy planning, but then two, the cash value component is very attractive to him. Saying, hey, I can put money here. I like the idea of storing money here instead of my bank account. One, it's accessible. Two, it actually produces <laughs> a decent return. And I've got the tax-free benefit, assuming I don't mech it out or lapse it with a gain or a loan outstanding, anything like that. So what we're gonna look at here it's 500,000 per year over five years. So two and a half million dollars in total going into the policy and then two purchases. One, 500K coming out in year two and then 1.5 million in year six. Now, touched on this with a 50 year old. This is important because individuals we work with whether they're putting in 500K per year, a million per year, if they want the ability to put a million in. Here's the thing, policy flexibility, I talk about this all the time, the policy design is critical here. One, to make sure that the majority, as much as possible of that payment is getting me the death benefit I want or need, but really is getting going towards cash value, that I'm accumulating as much cash value as possible, because that's a lot of money I'm paying in. So how this policy specifically was designed is I have a premium of just under 50,000. It's $45,000 and change with the base plus the term, a little over 50,000. That's the total. So that premium plus term rider. Purpose of the term rider was to ensure we had a MEC limit, so that's the IRS limit that regulates the maximum amount of money we can pay into a policy per year and still have the IRS consider the life insurance policy as life insurance and reap the same tax advantages life insurance policies do. I'm talking about the cash value. I can use it tax free. If I violate that, if I trigger a MEC, well, then my cash value does not have the tax benefits I want. Gross tax deferred, but any of the gains are taxable upon accessing them. MEC limit is at a clean $500,000. The death benefit in this example is just over $7.1 million. That's how much death benefit we needed for that MEC limit. But everything else here, let's give ourselves some space, is going into the PUA rider component cash value acceleration and death benefit acceleration. You know, what's so interesting to me is when you funnel money into this policy or into the PUA component, you do have cash value. That's why a lot of people do it. But the death benefit appreciates at a greater rate long-term and especially when you look at the guarantees. That's what's so attractive to it to me is because I like looking at the guarantees. Now, what I also wanted to touch on here was the flexibility. So how many of us would be comfortable receiving a $500,000 bill every single year? For one year, two years, five years, right? $500,000 bill or just commitment. I have to pay it on a certain date. Some of us might have no problem with it. Depends on our situation, but if you can have the same results and have a policy where I can easily commit to, call it, call it a 50,000, 50, we'll closer to 50 to 60K, and then have the ability to add the rest of the money, PUAs, at leisure, tracking the performance, tra tracking the MEC limit, all that good stuff, meaning I just add money in at my discretion, is that more attractive or loosen the vice grips, I should say, increase my comfort level in terms of opening a policy? Absolutely. It does for me, it does for most people we work with. 
that added flexibility. This way, the policy never feels like a burden. That's not what I want. Takes away the peace of mind factor. So let's take a look here. Like the other examples, we're going to look at interest only payments first. So we've got the growth first. And again, it doesn't have to be half a million going in. We can turn this into 10,000, 50,000, whatever dollar figure it might be. What's interesting about this, a lot of times we talk to individuals in their 60s or even 70s, they see these policies and say, wait a minute, like I was presented whole life insurance when I was 30 and it took me 12 or 14 years to break even. Now I'm 60 and I'm breaking even between years three and four. Like, what's going on? <laughs> well, what's going on is, again, all in the design. Design, quality company selection, all that fun stuff, but that's exactly what we're doing here. Death benefit, again, this is a blended whole life policy. Pure dividend, MEC limit, 500K. Okay, letting it sit and grow. It can fund longer if you wanted to, or shorter actually. $500,000 loan. What's the impact of that policy loan? Death benefit. Dollar for dollar reduction. If you have a question, can I borrow in the first year? The answer is yes. Does it always make sense from a numerical, from a number standpoint? No. But again, depending on my situation, you do have the option to do it. That's my point. So borrowed out $500,000. What's interesting about this we paid in 500,000, I loaned out 500, cash value still increased by 9K. Well, it did, but the loan interest payment I made was 28 grand. So that's my true out of pocket that year. Then each year, I'm paying just the loan interest, funding goes in, $1.5 million loan. Actually work with, he started when he was 65 at individual, that invests very heavily it was uh, in apartment complexes, multi multi-family complexes. Did very well. He actually took a policy out where he was funding for five years. That was the initial plan, but he ended up going, his plan is to go. He's entering year six now. He's coming up on that and wants to continue to feed it because he can, he's got the cash flow, went a little bit longer than anticipated. So here, paying interest only as time passes, and that's it, just carrying the loan balance. Which, I mean, ideally you wanna pay it off. He can easily pay nothing at a certain point in time, meaning he doesn't have to pay the loan interest. We are gonna do that in future case studies, show these examples. But if I look at age 90, if I just let it sit and grow, hey, that's beautiful. But over here, what do I got? $5 million death benefit, paid interest only. Perhaps I leverage the loan elsewhere with a cash value collateral loan, very attractive, where maybe I get a three to three and a half percent interest rate, can do a lot more. There's some good groups. Um, feel free to reach out. We can put you in touch with a couple of them. No affiliation, kickbacks, nothing like that. We just have a few lenders that are big inconvenience and people that work with them are happy and they enjoy working with us. Just with full transparency as always. Let's look at the repayment option here. So same thing from a funding standpoint, 500 for five years. Same thing with loans coming out. 500,000, then 1.5 million. Now what I did in this example, this was kind of fun, was during the funding period, the first five years, we demonstrated interest only payments on the 500K loan. So when you take the 500,000 out, there's the dollar for dollar reduction death benefit. Again, I'm still earning a dividend on my cash value and the loan balance keeps on compounding. That's the beauty, but interest only during the first five years. And then we took that $1.5 million loan out, took my balance up to 2 million, got my death benefit here. Same thing, <laughs> I'm getting excited. Dollar for dollar reduction. And then started allocating 200K per year toward repayments. When it is paid back, 
What do we notice here? This is the fun part. Cash value is 3.9, death benefits 5.826. Over here, cash value is 3.846, death benefits 5.7, when I just let it sit and grow. The example where I borrowed and repaid is higher. Why is that? Granted, I paid more net out of pocket in loan interest, but why? Why is my cash value death benefit higher? This example, like the age 50, the 50 year old individual, is a direct recognition company. And it is a company that raises the dividend rate on borrowed funds. They kick the dividend rate actually up to 6% which their present dividend rate is 5.65%. For many of you, I just gave away who the company is, <laughs> but that's okay. I like this company a lot. All right, so same thing here. I just wanted to show a cleaner example. From a, when I say cleaner from a repayment standpoint, this would be the last example we're gonna to touch on. Same. Half a million, I always like to compare to the growth and if we're looking at examples, I would encourage you to do so to see the true impact of policy loans when I pay interest only, when I pay it back, and also when I pay nothing back. And we can definitely, we will be putting case studies together on that at some point in the future. We have a lot of old ones on file already, but I'd like to do some on this. There's my loans coming out. Here we took out loans. There's my loan interest expense zero principal payment, and then just start paying 200K per year towards the balance there. Same thing with the cash value restoration over time, a little bit higher on the example on the right. And again, that's due to the direct recognition treatment. But the, po the point or purpose to all of these examples, this was an in-depth case study, or I should say these were several in-depth case studies is really to demonstrate how the policy functions in itself when utilizing it for real estate, right? Borrowing, repaying, money stays at work for me. What we definitely should do, and we will do, we do do for people we work with is look at the actual performance of the properties. If you want to take it several steps further and say, okay, what's it look like now that I buy a property, here's exactly what it's producing. And let me take that cash flow or a portion of it and pay it back towards the policy loan, a customized scenario. And you can do the same thing if I'm paying off debt, I'm using it for business, whatever it might be. But hope you enjoyed this one and all of the case studies. Uh, if you have any questions at all, always feel free to reach out. Uh, we're happy to provide more information and would love to work with you. Um, that's all I got. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.